grew the company over time and uh, eventually was assigned to uh, executive protection and uh, threat assessment, risk management. And just to tell you a little bit about that, what my official duties were was to secure uh, personnel, data, and property uh, of VIPs that our company is hired to protect. So there's a whole lot of training that goes into that. And um, I became a security specialist for SIS, specializing in executive protection, also risk and threat assessment uh, to our clients. Our clients are the companies or the individuals that we contract out with and provide services for. And it was in that context uh, that I became aware of uh, what I describe as a social engineering program and uh, a research and development program that was being carried out by SIS uh, and our clients in Seattle, uh, the Amazon Corporation. And it was through moving up within the SIS um, hierarchy and working with more and more people as I was assigned to more and more assignments, I became aware of these, the existence of this program. And then little by little over time, I became aware of the extent of it. And it wasn't long before I realized how horribly out of control it was, how downright evil it was. Once I began to realize that SIS was experimenting on its own employees, my fellow security specialist, I was outraged. I later learned that um, my company was involved in a larger social engineering program that encompassed the entire city of Seattle. That aspect of the program was experimenting on the homeless population of Seattle, Washington, uh, who were housed in DESC, Downtown Emergency Services Center uh, facilities. And I later learned that they were indeed experimenting with, when I say experimenting, voice to skull, hive mind, behavior modification technology that is frequency-based and directed at a targeted individual to basically control their entire person. Uh, as more and more information information and details of the program became, uh, were made known to me. I became more and more outraged by it. And I spent a long time, because I had many friends within the security company, a lot of these people are great people. within that is the all of the information and the know-how that you need to be able to gain stock, and that is, in fact, what they are doing. Um, and so over time, I, I became outraged, and um, I tried to play my cards right, wait for the right moment. And uh, when I really just couldn't tolerate it anymore, when I found out just how out of control it was, I decided to object to my superiors in person, but within SIS specifically, what happens is they are uh, experimenting on their own employees. So uh, it's a long story, I'll try to get through it quick, but basically people are selected from all over the country. Um, we're talking other cities all over America. They are selected uh, for many different reasons. Often it is because they are isolated, they don't have a lot of money, friends or family, and they also tend to be people that are highly, highly intelligent. Um, the aspects of this technology that they're interested in improving upon have to do with cognitive processes, processing information, and as a result, they want highly intelligent people to be targets of this program. They also tend to target people who are into what I would call alternative research, uh, commonly called maybe conspiracy theories, people that disagree with the government, people that are into researching things like 9-11. Uh, also, they are interested in people that are interested in technology. I have found a high percentage of targeted individuals to be people who either are interested in or have information on highly advanced technologies, usually having to do with directed energy weapons and frequency weapons, uh, the exact kind of weapons that we're talking about here that are used uh, in voice to skull um, and behavior modification, the works. There's many other aspects to the technology. But once these people are selected, um, they will have the entire gang stalking slash voice to skull program run against them. This is detailed in my article, but they will be organized stock. They will have career um, 
sabotage programs run against them to ruin their job. They will have character assassinations camp- campaigns run against them in their neighborhood. They'll be isolated from family and friends as those individuals are turned against them. And they will be isolated slowly and slowly over time using the technology itself as uh, many of the people freak out understandably when they at first don't know what it is. Oftentimes, they end up going to psychiatrists and uh, false diagnoses of schizophrenia, manic depression, uh, delusion, delusional paranoid are rendered against this individual. And it turns out that that's a loophole in the law, law that they are using to take away people's constitutional rights as once you are deemed mentally unfit to care for yourself, i.e. you're depressed, delusional, paranoid, etc., they use that, uh, the state or the federal government uses that as, as an excuse to come in and say that they have to care for you. So I would warn all targeted individuals out there, please do not go to psychiatrists and, and and allow them to render a diagnosis against you because that is a dirty trick they're using to take away the rights of people all, all over the country. So full-blown TIs, what I would call people that are getting the voice to skull, the frequency, and the organized stalking, I have heard is between 1 and 2 million, and that could be completely off. But one of the things I'm concerned about is the technology as it's being researched and developed in Seattle utilizes emotion manipulation and behavior manipulation uh, without the gang stalking and without the voice to skull aspects. And so this use of the technology can be done very covertly to the point where the person it's being used against will not know that this technology is being used against them. And that is one of my main concerns and one of the reasons why I want to bring more light to this technology and to this issue because this technology could potentially be being, be being used against tens to hundreds of millions of Americans every day. But when you consider that use of it and the fact that it is used for emotion and thoughts and behavior modification, then we could potentially be looking at many, many millions of people across the country that are under the influence of the technology uh, today. The mind is boggled by the possibilities uh, in terms of what this could be used for. The radio frequencies, um, microwave signals, uh, the entire spectrum um, of radio frequencies can be used um, within a certain range uh, to produce all sorts of different effects. So the, what, the way it works is a device broadcasts a radio frequency, let's say at an individual, and that radio frequency will hook up with the resonant frequency of the individual's mind or body or, in this case, DNA. And what happens is once the resonant frequency is found in the targeted individual, and the broadcast frequency matches up with that resonant frequency, those two frequencies interlock, and they can be thought of as one frequency or one energy. And what happens is between the broadcast frequency and the individual that's receiving the broadcast frequency, once it's resonating, uh, once they are resonating together, a, a super highway of frequency along which information can be sent is created. And so you can think of it just like fiber optic cables that you use to send uh, signals over the Internet that connect people to the Internet. It's the exact same thing, only a wireless application of that. And so once you have connected the targeted individual with the frequency um, and they resonate together, then you have a perfect uh, avenue upon which to send and receive information back and forth. And that's exactly how they manipulate someone's thoughts. They send voices into someone's head. Uh, they manipulate their emotions. They manipulate their behavior. And then that's also how they receive back from the Id individual in real time uh, the vital signs, the emotions, the thoughts, uh, what the person's seeing, what the person's hearing. And then all that information, of course, is rendered on a computer elsewhere uh, via software, and it can be monitored and tracked in real time. It can literally stop your own thoughts from happening and replace them with other thoughts uh, by sending thoughts to your head. And it's so sophisticated that you cannot tell where these thoughts are coming from. There's no way to, to discern that they are coming from somewhere other than your own mind. So you can imagine how bad this would be for people that don't even realize this technology exists and are having these thoughts, which they think are spontaneous because 
uh, being under the influence of this technology now, kind of having been on both sides of it, I am, I am just amazed um, at the way it works. And I know that the thoughts that they beam into your head originate from the exact same place in your mind that your own natural thoughts originate from. So if I didn't know I was under the influence of this technology, then I would have no idea that anyone was influencing my thoughts at all. And that's exactly what it can be used for. It can be used to sway people in terms of their opinion, to make them go along with a certain agenda. It can be used to turn groups of people or individuals against each other uh, for whatever purpose. And uh, messing with people's thoughts uh, is really, really concerning, and it is so advanced now that they can do it without people even realizing it's being done. And the thing that shocked me about it is it's not being done, you know, in a secret military base somewhere, and it's not being done in a controlled environment where people are being kept safe and separate. You know, the test subjects are kept separate from the general public so that nobody gets hurt. The entire city of Seattle has been turned into a massive proving ground for this technology, and it's being done right out in the streets. It's being used against people uh, that are driving. It's being used against people that are trying to live in a city environment with the congestion and all the other people around uh, that you have in that environment. And so the potential for accidents and things to get out of control and for people to get seriously hurt and indeed be killed by this uh, is real and it's happening all the time and I think it just shows just how not only out of control this program is but how completely unchecked the research and development um, aspect of our national security structure has become Uh, they are completely immune to any oversight, to any consequences, to anything they're doing. And I just could not believe that this research and development part of this program was so advanced and was so widespread and it was so out in the open. Uh, What I do know for a fact is, of course, defense contractors are involved in the research and development of the technology going back decades. And uh, if anybody wants to learn more, I would suggest looking up patents into things like microwave auditory effect, the voice to skull, the behavior modification, uh, frequency weapons, directed energy weapons. Go back to the work of Nikola Tesla and uh, look on down the line throughout history to see who the scientists were that were working on this and then see the connections that they had to certain aspects of the military industrial complex of our, of our country. So defense contractors are involved. Okay. Um, there's a few questions that I have. These people that are doing this, the gang stalking, they're doing it on the pretense of that we're criminals, correct? Uh, correct. Really quickly, yes, that is the premise that they use to, uh, to assassinate your character amongst gang stalkers. Uh, usually there's no actual crime that's been committed, so you're not in fact criminals, but yes, that is the lie that's told. Well, no, I know I'm not a criminal, but that's how they get them to do what they're doing. Correct, yes. Normally there is uh, part of the uh, character assassination campaign that's run. There are lies, there are rumors that are spread about the targeted individual. And so in in relation to the TI, uh, all sorts of stuff is said about them. Uh, In every case, it's never true. So I can testify as a gang stalker on that side of it that all of the gang stalkers know it's not true, uh, but it is used to generally degrade the character of the TI uh, so that they're looked at, you know, in general as a scumbag. You're absolutely right. Okay. All right. And is there a production team that is in charge of that? Absolutely, yeah. There is a command and control structure uh, that is uh, in charge of normally um, a targeted individual. So any elements of the program that need to be run in relation to that TI will be coordinated by a supervisor. And the supervisor um, will work with people that are in control of the technology on one side and then the organized stalking or the street theater on the other side. So you do have a very uh, stringent uh, command and control structure. The one that I was a part of, of course, involved SIS and SIS exclusively. Um, But I have heard from others and general knowledge of the program that's being run around, this could involve people in local uh, and state police as well uh, as what I would call intelligence uh, 
operatives or assets. They are private corporations that do stuff like talent uh, agencies, recognizing talent, logistics specialists, technology specialists, and then uh, coordination specialists. I had a question. Do you see yourself as stepping up and testifying for some of the TIs that are gathering evidence to go to court? Absolutely, yes. I would be willing to help uh, anyone that is bringing legal proceedings against the program or against the government. That is my main goal in coming forward is to attack this from a legal perspective, and I would be uh, happy to lend my testimony or my efforts to anyone that's pursuing that goal. Okay, one other thing really quick. Are you a victim of V2K? Yes, I am. I am a victim of V2K, emotional, the, the works. I have got a uh, beta version, I believe, of what is going to be rolled out against TIs in the next couple of years. Um, my company was involved in a research development program of kind of the next generation of voice to skull and the frequency weaponry. And because uh, I knew these people and I decided to blow the whistle on them, they gave me uh, the most nasty version of it. Uh, it is highly, highly advanced. It's one of the reasons I've had a lot of problems getting relief myself uh, is because I'm dealing with something that is, um, I think, only the military would, would have and know about uh, in terms of its, its advanced state. So, yes, I am getting all of it 24 hours a day. Uh, I'm currently homeless. I've tried five other jobs since I resigned from SIS, and uh, I'm un under constant torture, surveillance, and gang stalking 24 hours a day. Well, what sort of things are you getting, V2K? What kind of things are uh, they telling you? That is interesting. Uh, the main one that they repeat all the time is, please be quiet in not so uh, nice terms or we're going to kill you. Uh, they tell me that everybody is against me. They tell me uh, all sorts of stuff. One of the people, uh, the lady that mentioned that the state of California uh, was involved with her medical problems where she messed up her back, and the voice of skull was telling her that it was her corporation or the, the company she was working for. I hope I get that right. Um, but that's what they do. They beam into people like me's heads um, all sorts of stuff to try to turn people against each other, to turn companies against each other, individuals against each other. And so what they do to me, I think, is very similar to what I've heard from a lot of TIs. They'll turn TIs against their family. They'll turn, turn family members against TIs, for example, and coworkers. And that's what they're doing with me. They're trying to manipulate me. They're trying to turn me against former employees, uh, employers, excuse me, people I used to work with, family members, friends, people I'm meeting online. And it's just a constant 24-7 back and forth. Don't trust this person. Do trust that person. Don't trust this person. Do trust that person. Don't you dare try to work again or we're going to kill you. Don't you dare try to contact this person or we're going to kill you. Uh, don't do this or we're going to uh, slander you and, and smear all sorts of stuff all over the papers. We are um, very disappointed in what you decided to do. Uh, we're going to they, – they have been sending stuff into my dreams as well. It's constant 24-7, and luckily because of my training, because I know all aspects are technology-induced, and because I have a bit of training in gang stalking as well, my response to it is always, number one, I know who it's coming from. I know who these people are, so I'm not listening to any of it. I go out of my way to judge things for myself and come to my own decisions. And then when it comes to gang stalkers, I just gang stalk them back. I'm only one man out here, but I try to take them on and, and fight fire with fire and stand my ground and just at least try to maintain the status quo so I don't slip further down into the darkness, so to speak, where they're, they're trying to put me. So one of the things um, I think that, that is an advantage of the security industry, number one, it's private. So if you were going to roll out an army of gang stalkers across the United States to mess with people, to track people, to surveil people, to follow people, and to make their lives uh, a general hell uh, to live every day, then you would have to do it covertly. You would have to do it in a way that is not noticeable to the rest of society. And in fact, the tactics that are used by private security companies and gang stalkers at large are specifically designed to avoid detection, not from the targeted individual, but to avoid detection from the general public. 
And so it's a, it's a very interesting surveillance situation. It, it fits right in with other surveillance situ- situations where they want the targeted individual to know that they're following them. And so in a normal surveillance situation, you do not want the person you're following to know that you're following them. They actually want the TI to know they're being followed because it has the maximum psychological impact. While at the same time, they need to do it in a way that your neighbors and your friends and your coworkers and your family do not know that they are doing this to you. Because the entire point of the program is to convince everybody else that the, the TI is crazy. And so they need to surveil you and gang stalk you in such a way that other people don't notice that they're doing it. But this is, this is the general appearance that they give, and so it's to be intimidating. And there's a very fine line between kind of the military intimidation and what you would call a gangster or a thug intimidation. And both aspects, of course, are there on purpose, and gang stalking has been designed specifically to have both aspects there. Uh, they want you to believe that your country hates you. They also want you to believe that you're in great danger all the time. And the thug gangster aspect of the vibe that they're giving off is there specifically for that reason. And so you can start to see how psychologically this is going to have an effect on someone very, very quickly. If they're under the impression that the military, their own government, and then a bunch of thugs are following and chasing them around the country, uh, it has a devastating psychological effect. Um, But it's also important to note that Despite the unsavory characters that are within this, the entire point of it uh, is a hands-off policy. And this is very, very evil, the way they're doing this. So, uh, I mean, not in any way defending them. I'm making the opposite point. The hands-off policy is in place by private security companies and gang stalkers, the federal government, and everybody else involved in this, specifically to have the excuse and say, we didn't actually physically harm this person. We never struck them. We never shot them. We never hit them. We never did any physical harm to them. So everything that's done by this program is meant to have a psychological effect, and the psychological effect is meant to complement the effect that the technology is having on the individual so that they are brought to a place in their life where they're isolated, they're broke, they're unemployed, they have no family, they have no friends, and nobody in the general public can track or trace anything that's being done to them because the technology is remote and it's wireless and there's usually no physical signs left on the individual that anything is being done to them. And the interaction with gang stalkers within the community There is no physical evidence that any gang stalking ever went on. They are specifically instructed, you know, do not slash anyone's tires. Don't, you know, uh, vandalize their house. That is not the point of the program. The point of the program is to have maximum psychological effect and leave the minimal amount of evidence. And so you can see how this hands-off policy, and this is a standard term that's used within the private security industry in terms of what security guards and security personnel are supposed to do uh, in terms of a threat. You are supposed to maintain a hands-off policy uh, at all costs until you absolutely must intervene physically or with, or with use of force. And so that's kind of a, uh, an industry term that's been adopted by gang stalkers as a hands-off policy against the TI so that when that person ends up in a hospital or ends up physically deteriorated, they can't turn around and blame the gang stalkers because they were never quote-unquote touched or physically harmed by them, even though all of the harm that's done to TIs is done by the gang stalkers, it's done by the federal government that endorses this program, and it's done by the technology. And therefore, the gang stalkers, the technology, and the federal government is liable and responsible 100% for everything that's been done to the TI. Nobody advertises you know, on Craigslist that we're hiring you to harass and torture people. It's just not done. And I can speak personally for myself and I can speak personally for the people I worked at, with at SIS that when you do first find out what's going on, you are disgusted by it. You cannot believe that this is what's going on. There is also a very quick, um, almost a peer pressure-induced acceptance of it. And I can tell you that this is exactly what is done to people um, almost immediately upon the revealing of what the group they're offered, 
um, acceptance into what will be the future of America, that you will be set, you and your girlfriend, or if you're married, you and your wife, your husband, your children are going to be taken care of. You're going to make a lot of money. You're going to have brand new cars every couple of years. Your kids are going to go to the best schools, and you are going to be connected, for lack of a better term. And, and at this point, it really does take on almost an organized crime feel to it because what you're, what you're dealing with are people that are pleasing their boss in order to do something that is absolutely illegal. They're, they're monitoring and harassing and, tor- and torturing and sometimes leading to the death of American citizens. They're violating their civil rights. They're violating their human rights. They're violating basic human decency. This is, this is horrible stuff that's being done to people. And so you have to understand the psychological aspect that goes into convincing gang stalkers and people that are part of the program to do what they're doing. is just as advanced, if not more so, than the psychological program that is run against TIs. It absolutely is. And so what you have is this very intense psychological program that's run. In fact, uh, one of the things that I'm not sure people are aware of, but I'm trying to cover this on my site because I have direct knowledge of it, hive minds, voice to skull, emotion manipulation behavior, uh, modification technology, is being used against the gang stalkers themselves and against people in the program. And it is being used to assist them in doing their job, specifically to take away their conscience, specifically to take away their empathy and their sympathy for the individual, for the targeted individual, so that they don't feel bad, so that they don't feel guilty about what they're doing. They are, are, you know, many times intelligence agents and soldiers are trained to get the empathy and the sympathy out of their system because you're going to be asked to kill someone for us. You're going to have to go on the battlefield and shoot someone, and you're going to to shoot them just because we tell you to shoot them. And so a lot of the stuff that goes on in basic training and in terms of training intelligence operatives is designed specifically to make sure that people will pull the trigger when they need to. And stuff like human decency and love and compassion and empathy and sympathy and caring for your fellow human being does not enter into the decision-making process. And so the exact same thing is done within the program, within the Voice to Skull Gang Stalking program. And it is done not only by peer pressure and direct training, it is also handled by the technology that can manipulate the people's emotions to turn off empathy and sympathy and love and care and compassion and to turn on what I call almost a mercenary hired gunman mentality. And the reward for going along with this is you get to be part of the social group. Look at the Mm -hmm. TI and how isolated they are. Look at how horrible their life is. Look at how sad it is. And every time I think about it, I start to choke up. It's so overwhelming. My heart just naturally goes out to these people, and I want to help them. But when you're the gang stalker under under, under the influence of this technology and the influence of the peer pressure and everything else, you don't feel that. And if you do, the technology is going to take it right out of your system. But look at the TI, how isolated they, they are. You're not going to be isolated like that because you're one of us. These are your people. Look around at all the other gang stalkers. Look around at the military and the intelligence services of the United States of America. Look at the local and state police. Look at the social workers. These are our people. You can date any one of these women that you want. You can date any one of these men that you want. Heck, we'll help you hook up. You can come and party with us and go out to dinner and do all the things that people do together. And that T.I. can't. That TI can't because of X, Y, and Z. That TI can't because he's on the wrong side of this. You're very, very lucky to be on the right side, and don't you ever do anything to mess it up because you will end up right where that TI is. You're not going to be one of us anymore. You're going to be isolated. You're going to be gang stalked. You're going to be tortured 24 hours a day by the most horrific technology ever conceived by the mind of man, and you are going to die, grow old, and die alone. And unfortunately... You know, now I'm saying that I have a self-realization moment. I mean, that's exactly what's happening with me. And I can totally and completely understand how that is a very, very effective strategy to get people to go along with being a gang stalker and to help cover up this program. They were going to torture me. They were going to destroy all my relationships with friends and family. And I was never going to be able to make a living again. 
And in my mind, it just came down to the victims. It came down to targeted individuals all over America who are suffering every single day, who are crying out for help, who are curled up in a ball in the corner in their bedroom in horrible physical pain and horrible emotional pain and know that nobody will help them. Everybody calls them crazy. Everybody says, you know, the, there's something wrong with them. Friends and family abandon them. Their, their relationships with their significant others are ruined. Their kids are taken away from them. If a gang stalker wants to think about coming forward, this is, this is the d- decision that they face. Um, but, you know, are you willing to risk everything to try to save this country, um, to try to save the individual out there who's on the receiving end of this program and is suffering and needs our help? And I'm hoping that by me coming forward and doing the best I can and for surviving as long as I can, I will inspire other insiders and give them the courage and the hope they need to make that decision as well and see if we can't start making some progress against this thing. They want the targeted individual to know that they're following them. And so in a normal surveillance situation, you do not want the person you're following to know that you're following them. They actually want the TI to know they're being followed because it has the maximum psychological impact. While at the same time, they need to do it in a way that your neighbors and your friends and your coworkers and your family do not know that they are doing this to you because the entire point of the program is to convince everybody else that the, the TI is crazy. And so they need to surveil you and gang stalk you in such a way that other people don't notice that they're doing it. They also want you to believe that you're in great danger all the time. And the thug gangster aspect of the vibe that they're giving off is there specifically for that reason. And so you can start to see how psychologically this is going to have an effect on someone very, very quickly. If they're under the impression that the military, their own government, and then a bunch of thugs are following and chasing them around the country, uh, it has a devastating psychological effect. And this is very, very evil the way they're doing this. So, uh, I mean, not in any way defending them. I'm making the opposite point. Nobody advertises you know, on Craigslist that we're hiring you to harass and torture people. It's just not done. And I can speak personally for myself, and I can speak personally for the people I worked at, with at SIS, that when you do first find out what's going on, you are disgusted by it. You cannot believe that this is what's going on. There is also a very quick, um, almost a peer pressure-induced acceptance of it. It really does take on almost an organized crime feel to it. Because what you're, what you're dealing with are people that are pleasing their boss in order to do something that is absolutely illegal. They're, they're monitoring and harassing and, tor- and torturing and sometimes leading to the death of American citizens. They're violating their civil rights. They're violating their human rights. They're violating basic human decency. These, these is, this is horrible stuff that's being done to people. It hive minds, voice to skull, emotion manipulation behavior, uh, modification technology – is being used against the gang stalkers themselves and against people in the program. And it is being used to assist them in doing their job, specifically to take away their conscience, specifically to take away their empathy and their sympathy for the individual, for the targeted individual, so that they don't feel bad, so that they don't feel guilty about what they're doing. And stuff like human decency and love and compassion and empathy and sympathy and caring for your fellow human being does not enter into the decision-making process. And so the exact same thing is done within the program, within the Voice to Skull Gang Stalking program. And it is done not only by peer pressure and direct training, it is also handled by the technology that can manipulate the people's emotions to turn off empathy and sympathy and love and care and compassion and to turn on what I call almost a mercenary hired gunman mentality. In my mind, it just came down to the victims. It came down to targeted individuals all over America who are suffering every single day, who are crying out for help, who are curled up in a ball in the corner in their bedroom in horrible physical pain and horrible emotional pain and know that nobody will help them. Everybody calls them crazy. Everybody says, you know, the, there's something wrong with them. Friends and family abandon them. Their, their relationships with their significant others are ruined. Their kids are taken away from them. If a gang stalker wants to think about coming forward, this is, this is the d- decision that they face. Um, but, you know, are you willing to risk everything to try to save this country, um, to try to save the individual 
out there who's on the receiving end of this program and is suffering and needs our help. And I'm hoping that by me coming forward and doing the best I can and for surviving as long as I can, I will inspire other insiders and give them the courage and the hope they need to make that decision as well and see if we can't start making some progress against this thing. This was proposed in 2006 and has largely flown under the radar. Sentient World Simulation is a matrix-like reality simulating humanity. We talk often about the quantum computers, the kind of ability they've got to map and model humanity itself because of this Internet of Things that is all around us now as well. We're feeding all of our information back into this quantum computer that's basically got a virtual world where all of us have a digital avatar in there. They're able to manipulate the digital avatar in a virtual world and that's actually translated to effects in the real world. You cannot compromise. You cannot negotiate. You cannot surrender to a computer. It will continue to do what it is programmed to do. What might be behind this digital enslavement. Um, but if you think that virtual reality and living in a simulation is just too far off, totally unreal. Well, that is exactly what the United States government has been working on. Throughout my childhood, I'd always known of a facility called the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, located in a city adjacent to my own. It was looked at in the community as just a research facility where a lot of smart scientists worked on nuclear developments and other important technological initiatives. Well, earlier this year, my brother and I started researching nuclear weapons testing and what the psychological impacts were when we took nuclear testing into a virtual space. And as our investigation unfolded, we found that the Livermore Lab has built an impressive greenwashing PR campaign that cloaks a much more sinister reality. Behind me in this relatively ordinary looking building is one of the fastest largest artificial intelligence computers in the world. It's called Sierra, a very different kind of supercomputer than ever before. Lawrence Livermore is starting to work with IBM in a partnership and collaboration to explore how the IBM True North neuromorphic chip is going to be able to be applied to problems in the national interest. These custom designed chips and the classified software are creating detailed computer simulations to a level never seen before. It's actually the unique design architecture configured specifically to run artificial intelligence that is the breakthrough. Robots the smartest people. Artificial intelligence, AI. The idea is to port the software from the human brain. Rather than hardware and software, they're actually going to a new form of software and that is the biological replacement of the human brain functioning as a quantum computer, biologically, and then loading people, integrating people into this new form of brain. It is called the Sentient World Simulation. The program's aim, according to its creator, is to be a continuously running, continually updated mirror model of the real world that can be used to predict and evaluate future events and courses of action. In practical terms, that equates to a computer simulation of the entire planet, complete with billions of nodes representing every person on the Earth. Right now, we're inside a computer program. Is it really so hard to believe? Actually, a system of computers, of conscious computers with a will, intellect, and emotion of their own. Now, it's really not their own. It's the bio-algorithms which make up the, the bio-algorithms which make up the will, intellect, and emotion of those that they've copied and destroyed. We've been talking about artificial intelligence for decades. It started in the science fiction realm and has grown into reality. Specifically, we are looking to see how we can tackle uh, simulation modeling problems uh, and pattern recognition classification inference problems across the national security space but in particular in the fields that the ASC or advanced simulation and computing program is tasked to explore and develop. At the time of initial reports on the program there were only 62 country level simulations being run by the US Department of Defense. These simulations grouped humans into composites, with 100 individuals acting as a single node. But already at that time, the U.S. Army had used the systems to create a one-to-one -one level simulation of potential Army recruits. It's the stuff of a Hollywood movie, but a group of veterans has filed a lawsuit against the CIA and U.S. Army claiming that the government planted remote control devices in their brains. The claims relate to a government program at the U.S. Army's Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland. 
mind transfer, my copying, whole brain emulation, except for the purposes of uh, you know, creating a cognitive model of the victim's brain. The ultimate aim would be to archive enough data on each individual to be able to make a computer model of everyone on the planet. These custom designed chips and the classified software are creating detailed computer simulations to a level never seen before. They can study biology all the way down to the individual atoms, the hydrogen, the atomic level, down, all the way down there. They are doing DNA surveys from space. So what happens is you get these nanoparticles that attach to our DNA. And when they do, they act as receivers. I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, not a month goes by where I don't get a call at my institute by someone telling me that someone in the government implanted these things in their brain without them knowing. I'm not kidding. Out of disclosure, some of the work that I'm doing here today is funded by the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. I'm also funded by the European Union Human Brain Project, specifically the Subproject 12, where I'm a task leader for dual-use brain science. And I've also done some ongoing work with the Strategic Multi-Level Assessment Crew over the past 10 years at the Pentagon, with Dr. Tabayan's group, and with DARPA. The military agenda is interested in the potential weaponization and misuse of the brain sciences for nefarious agenda for political intelligence and military use. The Human Genome Project was carried out at the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab where I was a staff scientist for five years. The DNA is what they're using, what they're focusing on, and what they're weaponizing to completely control us. And uh, this is a completely new technology that, like the Morganons, is light-based. It's like building a little computer by uh, using these uh, single units a DNA is built out of. So what happens is you get these nanoparticles that attach to our DNA. And when they do, they act as receivers. If you're not aware of what nanoparticulate matter is, it's that matter which exists on a scale of 1 times 10 to the minus ninth. Very, very small. Smaller than a cell. The idea here is to be able to read and write into the brain function in real time, remotely. There are those that think, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The last sanctified space is that of my consciousness, and you're using this stuff to invade that? You're right. The brain sciences are currently being used in such endeavors, not only domestically, but worldwide. What has gone from the drawing board to the reality is this. The use of neural interfacing and physiological interfacing through the idea of remote-controlled small-scale systems to create a nano swarm of biopenetrable materials that you cannot see that can penetrate all but the most robust biochemical filters that are able to integrate themselves through a variety of membranes, mucous membranes, and wherever mouth, nose, ears, eyes, and they can be done in such a level that their presence is almost impossible to detect. And as such, the attribution becomes exceedingly difficult to demonstrate. The idea here is to be able to read and write into the brain function in real time remotely. What we know about Google is that they are doing DNA surveys from space. And of course they're being joined by Lawrence Livermore National Labs. They have, get this, high fidelity neural recordings. They're trying to do everything they can to map and to record your memory. It's not enough for them to record all of our metadata. Not enough for them to record all of our phone conversations, as the former head of the NSA said. He said they want total population control. That's how you do it with these brain projects. So what happens is you get these nanoparticles that attach to our DNA. And when they do, they act as receivers. The DNA has a unique frequency and signal. That is what they're using, what they're focusing on, and what they're weaponizing to completely control us. And although it may not be that the sky is falling yet, folks, it looks like rain. Bring an umbrella. That said, what's gonna rain down? Take a look. This is the front of my pen. This amount of nanomaterial, if be able to maintain and sustain with regard to its deliverability and aerosolization, could in fact affect all of you. The nanotechnology and the biotechnology filters down from the 
hydrosphere into the water supply and the food chain. And now every every American, all 318 million Americans are, are infected. It can be activated, the nanotechnology, from thousands of miles away using a process called directed energy flashing photons. Okay, They illumine the brain of the, uh, brain of the victim with photons that re read the return training signal. That's how the technology can be activated in a specific target's um, uh, brain. And it seems to be on a grid system. So they're doing a survey from space, and they went down uh, the west coast of South America and then came up the east coast, and now they're in Southeast Asia. At the time of initial reports on the program, there were only 62 country-level simulations being run by the U.S. Department of Defense. These simulations grouped humans into composites, with 100 individuals acting as a single node. But already at that time, the U.S. Army had used the systems to create a one-to-one -one level simulation of potential Army recruits. It's the stuff of a Hollywood movie, but a group of veterans has filed a lawsuit against the CIA and U.S. Army claiming that the government planted remote control devices in their brains. The claims relate to a government program at the U.S. Army's Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland. And the sentient world simulation, SWS, went live in 2007, which represents every person on the planet within this computer matrix as a node and every node is given an avatar an identifier and that is real-time 24 7 monitoring of every person on the planet this is primarily but not exclusively facilitated by the adiabatic quantum computers produced by D-Wave Corporation. It, it comes down to a kind of system that resembles uh, old-fashioned telephone system you have like dial-in codes and each frequency you give in, like do 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 every frequency you give in is switching on one single DNA element, making it open to take the next step. So basically what you can do with it is um, creating s synthetic DNA or RNA that is possible to be activated with a dial-in sequence of frequencies. All they need is to, to kind of identify your DNA fingerprint like mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. uh, with your name and then they can, they can watch you 24 hours a day. This is one part. The other part so is... So we, we are running GPS system. Yes. If you construct a model of the human brain you can then plug people into this hive mind. So nano diamonds being used for an MRI is exactly the same process of third strand of DNA nanoparticles that are receivers, just like in the MRI discussion here, they are receivers of the overhauser effect signals for the purpose of mapping the human brain or the whole body in the hospital. But this is exactly the same ultra low field MRI regime that is used to activate the third strand of DNA. As an insider with detailed information of this entire fucking program and how it works from top to bottom, I am privy to uh, some details that most are not. And that is that the true way that this technology works is that a complete DNA profile is obtained from the target, from the individual, the targeted individual. And then this information, the DNA of the individual, is used to determine the resonant frequency of the DNA itself. The resonant frequency is then used to fine tune the technology, the radio frequency signals, the microwave auditory effect, and all the other aspects of the technology to tune it perfectly to the resonant frequency of the targeted individual's DNA. They are changing the spin of quantum particles in the mind. That's how the mind control operates. And it, it's important that people know the specific mechanisms that are taking place so that you see that this is real, this is tangible, this is provable evidence of what is going on. You know, people want to say conspiracy theorists. Well, we don't do that. We take the papers, the peer-reviewed papers, we take the articles of the hard science, 
we give you the technical nuts and bolts. And this all comes out of particle physics, folks. This is all about particle colliders, synchrotron particle accelerators, hard x-rays, looking at our DNA, looking at the proteins building the DNA, using these hard x-rays to infer their quantum construction uh, patterns, their models. They do all of this in computer software, and now they're applying that same DNA process to the minds in order to, down at that you know, tubulin dimer level, be able to model exactly the electrical pathways, the electron flow within our human brains, from neuron to neuron, across synapse connections, all of those things across the dendrites, Everything is being modeled biologically. The researchers decided to create a quantum version of a neural network using an approach known as Variation Quantum Eigensolver, VQE, whereby instead of programming each computer in traditional bits, you have a single binary value of 0 or 1. The computers are trained to model quantum data using quantum bits or qubits that can be in superposition so each qubit can have the value of 1 and 0 at the same time. The Manhattan Project gave us the atomic bomb. The Genome Project gave us the human genome. The third great initiative could be the Connectome Project to map the entire human brain. And that may take a quantum computer. Um, understand that carbon is a conductive medium. So it can both send and receive signals. And that is exactly why the microtubules of our brains are composed of these Buckminster Fullerene microtubules is because they absorb signals, electromagnetic signals, and they transmit them. And that includes photons. And that's the primary vehicle of transmitting data from DNA, which is your are your memories. The data within the DNA is transferred within the brain and processed within the brain because that's all the brain in. It is not a storage medium. It is a processor. And this means communications could be done mentally. What I'm saying is that the internet will be replaced by brain net. The true holy grail in terms of this technology is DNA resonant frequency. It taps right into the DNA and it does it remotely by resonating with the exact frequency that your DNA resonates. DNA comprises our brains. It produces our brains. They are doing exactly what they did with DNA with a human brain. The mind operates on multiple frequency levels, but I'm going to just give you one specific, okay? The luminosity resulting from the collision of subatomic particles in the colliders inside the detectors at CERN produce identical frequencies as to the mind. Again, the mind has multiple frequencies, but they are reproducing through collisions, collisions of particles two of the frequencies within which the mind operates. And you better believe that they're operating at all of the various frequency ranges, alpha and beta ranges of the mind. Does that mean that CERN is, directed, is, is directing mind control systems? No, it means that they're doing the research and development that is then applied to the supercomputer systems like D-Wave for the purpose of, in the environment of the sentient world simulation, for the purpose of controlling people's minds. Once you have connected the targeted individual with the frequency um, and they resonate together, then you have a perfect uh, avenue upon which to send and receive information back and forth. And that's exactly how they manipulate someone's thoughts. They send voices into someone's head. Uh, they manipulate their emotions. They manipulate their behavior. And then that's also how they receive back from the in individual in real time uh, the vital signs, the emotions, the thoughts, uh, what the person's seeing, what the person's hearing. And then all that information, of course, is rendered on a computer elsewhere uh, via software, and it can be monitored and tracked in real time. It's horrible. It's horrifying. And it is a crime against humanity. This is something that needs to be dealt with.
in the Geneva Convention. This is something that needs to be dealt with in international courts. This is something that needs to be dealt with first and foremost by the Supreme Court of the United States. This is something that needs to be dealt with until we get to that point at the local and the state level. This is something that needs to be tackled by lawyers and civil rights advocates immediately. We need laws right fucking now to stop this thing because it is out of control and it is only getting worse. The entire population of the United States of America could conceivably be controlled by this. And I know for a fact, having been an insider and actually been a part of this program and seen it operate on a day-to-day -day basis, I am aware that there are now entire cities in America that are nothing more but a massive social engineering experiment. How are they implementing this? The people who developed it say it is airborne since 2003. And I had once I had the occasion to have a, a short look into those papers. I don't hold them. I'm not the one to publish them. If somebody decides to publish it, somebody completely else. I don't even know. But I had the possibility to have a look in and I do, did some research to verify if the things I saw there are realistic. Mm. It is sprayed by airplanes as well. It is brought into a form where it can stand the temperatures in the uh, back part of a jet engine hot air stream. So it's, it's able to survive temperatures. I don't know how they do it. And then it's airborne and basically it's all over the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. I've got no clue. And the, the, the difficult thing about this is that there is full proof out there somewhere, but the people who hold these papers and who hold the papers brought out by one whistleblower that didn't like actually at the end of his days, he didn't like what he was doing uh, during the last years of his life. So he, he decided to talk. The people who, who hold these papers, they don't know what to do with it because this is a basically it's it's kind of hopeless because this is out there and it's very complex and there's no medication against it. There's nothing one can do. So this holds people back to to even talk about it in public. I'm sorry, but that is unacceptable. It is your job to protect the American people. It is your job to investigate high crimes and felonies that have been committed by the people that have been entrusted with the safekeeping of this country, our constitution, and the American people. Unfortunately, what's happening in America today is all of the people who have been charged with our protection have fallen asleep at the wheel. They have failed to live up to their oath and either through complicity or complacency, they are either making or allowing this nightmare to occur on American soil. All it takes for evil to prosper is for good people to do nothing. And that is exactly what's happening today. As people who are crying out to family members and friends, to local law enforcement and the FBI, to their government, their military, to the private corporations who are involved in this for help are being met with silence or even worse ridicule they're being accused of being crazy they're being accused of being paranoid and schizophrenic to completely cover up what is in fact a social engineering program and a covert research and development program for some of the most sophisticated and advanced technology that the world has ever seen so the situation we're faced with ladies and gentlemen is as follows as we begin to untangle the Gordian knot of the brain through the development of neuroscience and technologies, we've come to the precarious position of opening the proverbial can of worms of if, how, in what ways, to what extent, and when these techniques and technologies will be used in weaponized intelligence and national security agenda. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that can has already been opened. And it'll be our job, and increasingly your job, be able to navigate this new terrain, this brave new world, and what it incurs.